Welcome to the second episode of Series 40, everyone. We'll be diving back into our Phoenix Dawn Command character creation session with Neil Powell shortly. But first, our usual announcements. It looks like all of the Kickstarters we've been talking about are now over and fully funded with lots of amazing stretch goals unlocked. Mm -hmm. So thank you to everyone who is able to contribute. Um, it is great to see lots of more, lots of more, to see lots more amazing projects coming to life. Um, I'm really excited about some of them. We got to do the uh, You Are the Dungeon. I got mm -hmm. to do the stream for that. Um, I'm really excited about season two of Courier's Call. Like, just oh, all yeah. kinds of stuff. All kinds of cool stuff. Recently. All kinds of cool stuff. Uh, and there's still even more kickstarters out there. Uh, so check around and, and find something you love. It's, it's yeah. really fun. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of things coming to a close, uh, last Friday I had my season finale uh, to Chi my Chimera stream, A Tale of Twinkle and Awe. Uh, and it was not only a phenomenal session, it was a tearjerker and really cemented some memorable moments for me uh, that I don't think I'll ever forget. So uh, if you want to see me get tears in my eyes while being recorded, uh, you can head on over to twitch.chimera.games and catch up on all the action. Uh, it was just a remarkable time all around. Are you going to be doing a season two of that at some point? or We, we are thinking about it. Just kind of waiting to see where... Where yeah, we we left it on a uh, on a cliffhanger, a mysterious cliffhanger of sorts. So uh, we hope to get back to it at some point. I've got see ideas. See if the network renews it. Or... <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> got to get that that big uh, anime slash action movie slash uh, comic book uh, re renewal thing going on. Gotcha. You got to find your big like product tie in to really fund the second season, probably. Yeah, I know something orange flavored, probably. <laughs> Well, that is all we have for announcements today. Thank you for joining us. Please enjoy the episode, and we will be back at the end with our call to action. In the last episode of Character Creation Cast, Neil was creating a bitter, Amelia was creating a shrouded, and I was creating a devoted. We're picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. Okay, we've done it. And to make it more complicated, the last set of things that we choose are more traits. So this one is interesting because, again, it, it's all set up on a, a finite set of resources because you only have – theoretically, we would only have one set of cards, not one set of cards for each of us, <laughs> um, which obviously is the only way we can do this uh, through the power of the internet is all of us having a set of cards. But yeah. if we were all at a table, what, what, I, what I've done before is if I'm not having people use pre-generated characters, I'll actually lay out all of the trait cards – for people to choose from because only one person can choose one card because mm -hmm. then it goes into their deck. Um, so that's to say, um, basically you choose two basic traits from each of the action suits you're associated with. Mm. So two, two grace traits. And then for both of you, two intellect traits for me, two strength traits, basically further fleshing out who your character is and what they can do. And also ultimately making them unique and different from the other people at the table because they have to be. Okay. So right now we're looking for two traits for grace, two traits for intellect for ourselves, and you would do strength, right? Yes. But then none of the none of the ones that we choose could be the same as anyone else is for the grace ones. Okay, or so you, let's or you, pick the grace. We can all pick grace ones that we have to yes. pick, and then we'll fight it out. Except probably not because you and I will never pick the same ones Ryan's picking. Yes. Uh. <laughs> and I can also pick from the ones that are from the drive through RPG. True. And then I can guarantee you're not going to pick them because you do, they're not in your hand. Mm. True. And it's any of them? It doesn't matter? Like. Nope. Any of them. Okay. 
I stumbled upon the um, the actual core uh, school cards. Uh, oh, I yeah. think it's got yep, the voting and the go. number two on it. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, that makes more sense. Um, so that's your school, yeah, the school card. Mm-hmm. Um, if I were to play this game down the line, I would have to organize all of these by school before I I made my players uh, build characters. Do you mean like in these stacks that are um, yeah divided into schools like that? Yeah, because mm-hmm. uh, because right now I'm I've got. Yes. Six different piles of cards um, that yes. came from the box, and right now I have no idea where to look for what. Yeah, so that's what I ended up doing. Is so then basically all the traits are so I divided it into the ones that are specifically for the classes, or rather, sorry, the schools. Um, I divided all the bad stuff, if you will, over into one pile. All of the just like raw grace strength and intellect cards into their own pile um and then um all the traits into their individual areas. oh that makes sense so for my grace traits because again i'm only choosing from four additional ones that came from the drive through rpg i'm gonna go with infamous um, where draw one card when you use this card in a spread and if you use it in a in a attack spread regain one spark your deeds in your first life have left you with a sinister reputation what's your story Mm. i also chose thrill seeker draw one card when you use this card in a spread when you use it in a defense spread regain one spark most people run from danger you run toward it Mm. Um, and it also makes me start to think of like mechanically how i would maybe start to play the character more is being um less careful with my sparks okay um because i'm already going to be less careful with my health um but yeah now i'll just be less careful with my sparks too okay so what do the numbers in the corner mean um i I just found a bunch of grace cards um Mm -hmm. a bunch of them have threes on them one of them has a one yes um what what do those numbers mean so those are like if you just played it that's what it could mean just if you needed it as nothing else but a card to play okay and so that it's its starting value and then does it have more value based on the card text um, and what it can or can't do. So when but we're talking about just, the value of the spread, that's what we're kind of uh, alluding mm-hmm. to there. Yeah. So then and then it's what's adding to it. So your your base level is just the. I found a card yes. for you, Ryan. Oh, Shaman. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Intellect. I, I yep. almost got to those. Oh, OK. There we go. Well, when you do, when you find Shaman. <laughs> I will I will keep that in mind. I'm gonna take the the most uh non Ryan cards for this one, right? Are you? No. You're okay. Nope. So I didn't believe that for a second. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, I found it. When an adjacent ally is injured, you may discard this card to take one of these wounds for yourself. Hmm. Yeah, it's a good contender. <laughs> Smartest person in the room. Oh goodness, there's so many in here. I found I found the miscellaneous pile of of traits apparently. Yeah, so some of the ones you stumbled your way into are ones that end up coming from like bad things that happen to you. Um so they're like pseudo affliction ones that end up like so horrific vision. Um basically you've been afflicted with a horrific vision and you're adding this card into your deck so then when you use this card in an attack or defense spread both you and your opponent are exposed for the duration of the scene um so yeah things can happen to you in game that would then add cards to your deck okay um memories of the chant those kind of things i've got i've got affliction cards here suffer the consequences then draw one card Mm mm-hmm Dun, dun, dun. Okay, I don't need any of these. Um, what's this pile here? And the art on these cards is phenomenal. Yes, it's such the a pretty style game. is. Oh, it's so straightforward, but so I mean, it's just perfectly executed. Mm-hmm. So since I had only two options, the two options I went for with strength are barbarian. Draw one card uh, when you use this card in a spread. If you're making a skill spread you may treat any number of strength cards as grace cards for this spread Hmm. and then i also chose feral 
draw one card when you use this card in a spread. If you have at least one wound, draw an additional card when you use this in an attack spread. Nice. I'm just finding more uh, grace uh, talents in these different stacks. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's heart of the wing. I don't need that. Okay. Add that to my grace talent pile. And now to go through the monster uh, sized deck that had been sitting here. Oh, more grease. There we go. I just have to check one more pile just to make sure. It's our intellect, I think. How many are we supposed to pick? Sorry. Uh, two of each. Okay. And we can't pick the same ones as each other, right? Mm hmm. Okay. So I think I've gone through all of my cards and pulled out the generic intellect um traits and the grace traits and i noticed that the grace pile is bigger because everybody gets grace correct okay hmm. okay i'm between three of the intellect ones tell me more all right so um there's shaman of course uh when an adjacent ally is injured you may discard this card to take one of the wounds yourself uh that feels very on point for my character uh seen this before you may discard this card to add three to the value of a wingmate mm. spread, adding to that whole helping your team uh, utility. And then smartest person in the room. Um, this is the power gaming selection of this card has a value of five when used in a skill spread. Uh, if this card is in the discard pile, you may burn two sparks to return it to your hand. So it sounds like I could just, you know, add a whole bunch of stuff. I, I like those. I'll go. I'll, I'll go on character. And I'll go with seen this before and shaman. Smartest yes. person in the room is really nice, but uh, I think I'll I'll leave those at the door, and that's okay. So now I need to pick two grace cards as well. I think I have mine. But... Hmm. It's interesting because uh, I found two cards in the grace pile that mechanically do the exact same thing. Mm, but mm -hmm. one is labeled noble and one is labeled commander. And I have a yeah. feeling, I have an inkling that those have a story element to them. Yeah. So then it's basically, because like you said, you're building your character out with the card. So like, were you a noble or were you a commander and everything about like, the interesting thing is also like, was it your life before or was it what you learned in the crucible because of your mentor Ooh. oh that's interesting because they don't have to be associated in any way shape or form right. to each other right oh that's interesting okay i lost my place here now <laughs> yeah. there's so many good cards to look through oh i gotta set this one aside for when amelia's back <laughs> oh this one's what what did you find uh last stand the grace Ooh. card uh you draw one card when you use this in a spread you can increase last stand's value by four for each of your current health levels if you do this you lose all of your remaining health levels and die once the action is resolved remove yeah. this card from your deck when you die whoa <laughs> hodor <laughs> oh that's amazing i'm not going to choose it but that's amazing yeah Right, how many do I have set aside here? I think I set aside four of them. Two of them are identical. Um, so I can get rid of this one because this other one sounds more interesting. Now I have to choose between these two. Okay. So I did find a grace card while I was looking that might be perfect for your character. I don't know if you saw it. Oh. Uh, the Disturbing Insights. I have that one. Oh, there you go. <laughs> We know each other so well I at this know. point. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad. Oh, it's fine. So I've got my two grace and my two intellect. I think I uh, do too. Perfect. I'm assuming Neil, you're you're you've been done for hours already. Oh well, I already and I already said him at some point. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm ready. All right. Well, let's. Uh, for those that don't remember, uh, in the audience, of course. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, say what we got. Okay. Who wants to go first? Um, Ryan, you usually go, it goes Ryan, Neil, me. 
That's fine. I can do that. Okay. All right. So for my intellect cards, I went with uh, seen this before. So I can discard this card to add three to the value of a winmate spread. Um, Shaman. Uh, when an adjacent ally is injured, you may discard this card uh, to take one of the wounds yourself. And I just love saying discard this card. Discard this uh, card. It just discard, rolls off the tongue. Discard. Mm -hmm. um, and then for my grace cards, I've got Noble. I may discard this card uh, to add three to a wingmate's spread. And Inspiring. When you use this card in a spread, you may burn one spark to let each of your wingmates draw one card. Uh, so I thought those were uh, pretty fitting for my character's utility uh, role in the party. That's very good. Mm. All right, Neil, what do you got? Let's see, were we doing, did you do grace or intellect I first? did intellect first. Okay, so I'll do my strength. Mm. Barbarian, draw one card. Use this card in a spread. If you're making a skill spread, you may treat any number of strength cards as grace cards for the spread. I also have Feral. Draw one card when you use this card in a spread. If you have at least one wound, add an additional card when you use this in an attack spread. Hmm. And then you did your grace as well, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Infamous. Draw one card when you use this card in a spread. If you use it in an attack spread, regain one spark. And then there's also a flavor text. Your deeds in your first life have left you with a sinister reputation. What's your story? Ooh. And Thrill Seeker. Draw one card when you use this card in a spread. When you use it in a defense spread, regain one spark. Most people run from danger. You run toward it. I didn't even look at the flavor text. This is delicious. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> All right. My intellect cards. I took brilliant deduction. You burn one spark and discard this card to ask the GM a question about the current situation. The flavor text says... What's the source of your amazing insight? Are you trained as a detective? Do you have an oracular vision? Mm. And I took Mysterious. Draw one card when you use this card in a spread. You may discard this card at any time to remove any stunned, exposed, or vulnerable conditions that are affecting you. You are a person with many secrets. How does one of those secrets apply to the current situation? Mm. That's really interesting because, like, my seen this before is whatever you're facing, you've seen this before, but where? Did you encounter it in your first life? Did you study it in the Crucible? Like, it, it feels like you're doing character creation mid-action mm -hmm. uh, with some of these, which is really cool. Yeah, I actually looked at taking that one hmm. because I liked the flavor text. Mm -hmm. uh, for my grace cards, I took Grim Determination. Remove any exposed, vulnerable, or sun conditions affecting you when you use this card in a spread. You remo may remove this card from your deck to remove all afflictions from your deck. Remove this card from your deck when you die. I just really don't want to be stunned, exposed, or vulnerable. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> and then I took Disturbing Insights. When you use this card in a successful attack spread, your target becomes vulnerable. Anytime you use it, pick a member of your wing. They must reveal a disturbing secret. If it is less disturbing than any previously revealed secret, remove this card from your deck. Oh, th that is such yeah. a you card. Like, it if is, I could pick it, any card from this deck, this is, like, the one that screams Amelia. I know. <laughs> That's how I felt about the shaman card for you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course, I will take your wounds. Uh -huh. And I'm like, tell me disturbing secret. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really do... Like we but we know each other so well at this point. Uh -huh. that I feel like most of the time we make characters like I have a thing for you. Yep. <laughs> I also love the part where it's like, and if it wasn't more disturbing than it last time, I'm getting rid of this card. I'm disappointed. <laughs> right. What a bummer. <laughs> what a bummer. Oh. But then you have yeah. to keep track of all of it, right? Yeah. Or at least the very last one. I, that's the thing, is like you can start writing down everybody's secrets. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And I like that it makes other people in the scene, like, involved in your action, too. Mm -hmm. And and again, character creation mid-action that you are kind of putting onto somebody else's character. 
you're like slowly revealing things too yeah. about yeah and i think with those flavor text things like revealing things about things about past lives that you've had mm-hmm. that's an interesting question neil you, yes so the assumption is that you've died at least once um just once at this point just once mm-hmm. could you play a game where you've died more than once at the beginning of you, the game yeah, you could, but in that in that instance, you would just start at a different rank. Because mm. mm-hmm. you like, and you can only because you can only go up to seven too. So there's something like mm-hmm. more serious too about knowing like you have less l- lives left. Yeah, and the the other thing would even Fewer. be like, what does like in that time? So then you you could have theoretically existed as a rank one phoenix for a hundred years. Mm-hmm. And then died your second death more recently, and now you're part of this wing. Because the other thing could have been that you, your entire wing died, you didn't, and now you're just there waiting for the next group to come up. And, like, no one's come back from your wing, and now eventually they have. Oh, oh there's so much potential. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because you're not necessarily, like, immediately reborn either. Not until you kind of start your campaign, mm-hmm. then you're going to be reborn at the next dawn. But no, not at all. It could have been oh. that, like you died that first death and then you died the second. And then it was 100 years before you even came back. Because that could be the other conversation is that you're rank two, but then something happened. And now you're only coming back now because of that wing, only to realize that everyone else didn't. Or like maybe everyone else did and you find out that your old wing all died. And you're oh, like, what is this? What do you mean you don't have Saturday morning cartoons? What happened to yes. UPN? <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. There's my Sailor Moon syndicated Right? Mm -hmm. I don't understand. (laughs) Cell phones. Okay, so um, what do we have to do next? Anything? So, no, technically we've created the characters per se. The only thing we would do from here is ask questions more about who they are. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the character itself has been created. We have statted. Yes. Okay, so we've got numbers and... Abilities assigned, yeah? Mm-hmm. And now we need to make sense of what that means to us. Yes. So, like, for instance, I, I chose the noble uh, for one of my talents, which means I was either a noble um, or I have a noble heart or both, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. Um, and I chose that over a very identical other card um that does the exact same thing mechanically called commander uh so that was kind of a character choice at that point right yes so there are preset questions to ask to Mm. to to finish it out um i didn't know if they would go in this if we would close out this one and go to the next one or not i don't know i don't remember how that works structure wise for the episode oh well you know we're still in character creation we're not done until our characters created no that's what i was thinking because i couldn't tell because they are definitely just character like questions yeah let's ask no let's let's ask ask some some questions um let's let's meet our people a little bit yes who were you in your first life how and why did you die and how does your school reflect this so little questions yeah, small question. <laughs> Oof. This is this is really interesting. Hmm. So, I mean, it usually kind of ended up. Sometimes it ends up a little bit dark, obviously, because death is involved. Yeah, uh, did die. Yeah. So my thought was for mine is what if I was like on the fringes of society and the the dread had just happened and I was actually a younger boy. And so then I have that bitter death because I feel like my life was, I mean, it was, I mean, for this character was taken away early. Mm -hmm. So now that's how that school reflects it. And just angry about having that cut short, especially knowing that that's what happened to other people. Cause that's also one of the other conceits of the, of the game is that you're, you, you have something in you that desires to either help people or at the very least stop the dread. Mm -hmm. I think because one of mine is um, you died either because 
You died because of a secret, either in pursuit of knowledge or because a secret was revealed or unknown. I think that when the dread first started, people were like pretending that it, it wasn't all that bad. It was happening over there and not a big deal. And, you know, um, not going to come here. But some people, me included, knew that it was worse than that. How could you? I know. And we didn't tell anybody. You could have told me. No, I mean, and so those are other <laughs> conversations you start to have as well as like, is that, is the statement that I made in jest actually true? Right. Like, do we, does that come out in play where? Like, I, they, I did know and mm -hmm. I could have done something and you could have not died. Mm -hmm. mm. And now as a team, you know, we have to grapple with that. Okay. I, I've got an interesting group here. Um, I'm pulling on my noble and inspiring and shaman cards, right? Um, I'm going to say that I came from a village uh, kind of near the heart of the dreads beginning. And my, my village or uh, city or whatever, I was probably like the head of it. Like the, the noble that was in charge of a lot of the bureaucracy and whatnot. And probably um, a shamanistic sort of figure as well. Um, probably why I was head of the village, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe um, maybe they're more revered in this uh, society. And um, we saw this coming. And I inspired the village to leave as I stayed back to hold off the dread as long as possible and saving as many people as possible. But not me. No, I'm wow. Saying. I'm not saying we're from the same village. I'm not, not saying that. Yes, exactly. I like it. So all of these things happened. So then that leads to the second question of to become a Phoenix, you must overcome significant spiritual trials. Um, Basically, you can't fight your way back out of death without having a reason because you know full well that being a phoenix is full of strife. So why did you come back? I mean, mine already kind of is alluded to. Like, I'm just angry. Mm -hmm. I'm just, like, I want to. Uh, I don't even know. Avenge is probably not it. Revenge is probably it. Or just the thrill. I mean, I think it's all of those things. <laughs> just, just being angry. Just, just pure fight. adrenaline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. So I think it's really just coming, coming back to that is just getting a chance to do. I think getting a chance to have a chance. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's the big thing. Mm -hmm. like, even if I like the idea of like even failing is okay, but I, I just didn't even feel like I had a shot. Yeah, I think I came back because. Um, I saw how it all started. And so, and I know personally what, what it's capable of. And I needed to come back in order to protect as many people uh, from it spreading as possible. Yeah. I think for me, it's, I knew at least some of the truth of what it was. Um, and I need to like make up for not saying anything before i love how we're all dancing around what this dread is like yeah, it's there oh, yeah. it's the dread we know mm -hmm. wink oh yeah because we haven't really said like oh it was all these crazy um werewolf type people or the undead yeah or just a, a literal black cloud yep. that mm -hmm. showed up and we all died um so what is the person, place, or thing that is most important to you that certainly won't be used against you in that game? <laughs> I obviously <laughs> added that last sentence. Um, what is the noun that is most important to you? Yes. That's a tough one. Because for me, I would say not person. And I'm, try I'm having a hard time saying it's place. Either thing. What would be the thing? Uh, no, maybe I lied. Maybe it is that place. I think maybe it's just that getting back to that village just to see what's left, what's there. Mm. I, I'm going to go with a person, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with, uh, my character's, uh, 
spouse mm. who who escaped and lived as far how, as I know. How long were you dead though? I don't know. Is your spouse still there? I don't know. <gasps> that's a, that's a question to be answered, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. How long mm-hmm. has the dread been around for? 3 years. So so you could have you, you that you have anything in that span of time. That's, yeah, so that's, that's a 3-year period of time only since I died. Mm-hmm. Uh so it's very possible, yeah. I suppose. I don't So we have a person a place. I feel like I should pick a thing. <laughs> I want it to be like something really fragile. Like I want it to be like a tea set. I don't know why. I just want it to be something like really breakable. But like mm. my know. heart. No. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> my favorite well, thing is me. <laughs> yes, yeah, it could be something made of glass. That is kind of what I thought, but I don't know what it would be. Yeah. Hmm. I'm gonna think on this. It is. I want. It'll be some kind of glass knickknack. I don't know what okay. it is yet. I'm gonna think okay. about it. So we can, while you think of that, and this could also tie together, what is your greatest fear? (laughs) That my knickknack will break. (laughs) That's exactly why I wanted to ask that question. So And there won't be any left on eBay. No. So mine is (laughs) definitely just not, I mean, just not doing anything. Mm -hmm. Like spending all this time, because I think the other thing in going back to the barbarian and feral cards that I've pulled, although the infamous does does make me laugh um, because I don't know how that works uh, as being a, a child. Um, <laughs> but it could have been just that I pulled hilarious shenanigans before. And then part of that makes me think of the boy who cried wolf. Um, like I was letting people know that the dread was coming and no one believed me mm. until it was true. Um, but then the barbarian and feral making me think of like having been in the crucible for like an absolutely inordinate amount of time, mm. like literal hundreds of years. Um, but then spending all that time, my biggest fear is all of that effort and then not being able to do anything. Mm-hmm. Oh, that sounds good. Um, my greatest fear I think would be when I find my spouse, them not recognizing or accepting me as the person that they had uh, previously married. Ooh. Which in no way, shape, or form would a GM uh, use that against me. (laughs) No. Absolutely not. I mean, I feel like my greatest fear is, like, people finding out that I could have done something about this sooner and didn't. That's a pretty good fear. Yep. So, well, yeah, also not going to be used against you. No, probably not. I can't see it ever coming up in the game. It's just like a fun little flavor detail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which member of the wing do you feel the strongest connection to and why? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I kind of feel like the way it's set up, um, Ryan, your character see seeing the well i guess we also eventually have to decide what we all look like post crucible um, Mm -hmm. is important as well um but i also think it's really funny to still be like a small a small child even maybe presenting (laughs) younger than the age um i went in at and then also just being this terrifying death monster um Mm -hmm. at the same time so i think maybe that's why that that connection is there um so between our two okay it's like See, see, like you, you invest into into my character, and so then I I have that deeper connection because of it. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Um, yeah, because I I would have I would see in you the uh, the children of my village that um, my sacrifice allowed them to to live, and um, kind of a sadness that there wasn't one somebody at your village uh, to do the same for you. Great. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh what about what about Amelia's secrets? <laughs> uh, man. I mean, I feel like I would feel the strongest like guilt toward Neil's character. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. Um and honestly, sort of like an annoyance toward Ryan's character for being like, mm-hmm. I helped out and you, like, it's great. Good for you. <laughs> cool. Some of us were busy <laughs> doing not that. <laughs> Trying to survive. I feel like almost like a resentment, mm-hmm. you know? 
Marco, you think you're better than me? <laughs> you would. Because you are? Mm-hmm. Not no. <laughs> so then you have your uniform is the basic clothing, armor, and equipment that returns with you every time you are reborn. Oh. What is the most distinctive element of your uniform? Oh, wow. Okay. So, I don't know. I don't know if he has... My character just doesn't feel like that. that's a thing. Um, <laughs> My character doesn't believe in this question. <laughs> yeah, uh, lame. Um, I think I have like a cape or a cloak or a, you know, a, a wrap, or as my sister calls it, a zhuzh uh, mm-hmm. of some sort mm. that almost looks like moving shadows, kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of spooky. I like that. Whatever time appropriate fashion accessory it is, depending on when I'm yeah. born. I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, my my wedding ring. Mm-hmm. It's the most distinctive element. Um, that since I ch- have changed, I've had to wear as uh, a necklace because it doesn't fit my fingers anymore. Or does it always fit your finger? No matter what form you take, because love. Oh. <laughs> I mean, if that's if that's within the rules as written. Oh, it totally. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's some something that you. Yeah, let's go with that. Uh, that sounds pretty sweet. Yeah. So I, I mean, I kind of, maybe it goes back to that infamous nature, but part of it is like, maybe the uniform is that I always kind of look like that that kid you knew that pulled those pranks no mm. matter who's looking like no matter who's looking at me <laughs> like they just like everyone recognizes and because i'm trying to think of how that infamous nature works but like everyone for some reason recognizes me as that kid but then like i'm not that kid for them mm-hmm. but that's what they that's what they see yeah there's something familiar about you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but then the next question will lead me to for them to maybe rethink that because your talon is a unique weapon or tool that you earned in the crucible. It returns with you when you're reborn and grows in power along with you. Um, so it could be a weapon, an object, though it incorporates the Dawn Command symbol in some way. What is your talent? Is that this symbol on your card or something? What's this Dawn Command no, symbol? It, uh, where is it? Oh, there you go. No, it's on the back of the other card. Oh, Okay. The it's the 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 phoenix symbol mm. of sorts. It looks like I would like to have an axe the size of my personhood. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing! Well, because you're a small child, uh, mm-hmm. always. So yeah, you're just going to be carrying around a child sized axe or an adult sized or an adult it's sized the same axe. size as right, yeah. right. So it's the same size as a child. Right. Yep. Like the like the axe head is that big, is that is that right or axe? Yeah, to... I would say like the 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 handle does come above. Like if it was just sitting on the ground, the handle will go a little bit above my head. Yeah, that's amazing. I would even say that like maybe the symbol is incorporated. That like that's the axe head looks kind of like the Dawn Command symbol. Yeah, I like that. So then, if it's like sitting that way, mm-hmm. done. I want a knife. With like an obsidian blade, Ooh. um, but I want it to have like the tip of it to be notched like that. Yes, hmm. and then I think oh, I just dropped a card. I think it has like a little bit of like a curved handle too, like the like the way it kind of. Oh you yeah, know? I say for a podcast, you know the way it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so like that. Okay. Hmm. I'm thinking of a, a shield, maybe. Mm. Would be pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I would also love something to swing around. But I don't, I don't see my character as like a. Uh, you know what? You can throw a shield. Yeah, you certainly can. Captain America has proven it multiple times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I think a shield. Um, like a frisbee shield would be pretty sweet and now the most interesting question 
or one that I really, really like the most. When you were born, your appearance is a reflection of your self-image. Some phoenixes look exactly as they did in their first life. Some are idealized versions of their original bodies. Any aspect can change. Age, gender, race, height. What is the vision of yourself that you show the world? Mm. And this is also the same question that you ask after every time you go into the crucible. Again, often one of the things is is separating more from that humanity the, the higher your rank is because the more Phoenix weird power you hold. Um, and so, like, is the Durant, like, it, one is do you, um, full metal alchemist, are you just a pseudo armor? Totally possible. Um, and then for an elemental, do you just turn into a literal elemental? Um mm. So, yes. Uh, and so, like I said, so for me, I still think I present at this point as that child mm -hmm. wanting to get that get that second chance. But then, of course, wielding all this insane power in a giant axe. I want to say that my my character looks very different from their original uh, form that they were probably like maybe middle aged or so when they uh when they died and uh i want to say that they were um also a man before they died and now they are a uh like a a younger uh woman mm. uh of the same of the same race and i think the same height too which would be really interesting i like it oh and um looks vaguely like um uh their uh spouse from oh. uh, from their first life so the idealized version that my character envisioned was uh their spouse tough question oh, yeah, so really mm -hmm. hard i think i look fairly similar to what i did which would be like a let's say like a middle-aged woman um, but at this point, I look even more like tired and weighed down. I have like sort of like bags under my eyes and like just look sort of weary in mm. a way that I didn't before. Interesting. Despite being reborn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hard it was a hard road getting there. Yeah. Uh -huh. And there it is. Those are the questions. Between these questions and, and traits, it says that uh, uh, this helps to give each player a clear sense of who their character is and how they'll react to the situations that lie ahead. Hmm. That's very cool. Um, and then it looks like we introduce the wing next. Yeah, and so that would so uh, that would be like if we were, were going to start play, basically that's... Okay. Um, yeah, you're, oh, you're right. So you would basically present yourselves, ourselves to each other, which, which we've certainly done quite a bit right here. Um, but then the uh, other thing is naming ourselves and naming our wing. Ah, yes. that's That sounds like an important part of character creation. Yes. Interesting. Do, do characters generally change names uh, after every re rebirth? No, usually you'll you'll keep that same name. Okay, because it's a because it because we were talking earlier and you you said it was kind of like a symbolic sort of name of who you are instead of like George or yeah, so you, whatever. So if you were George, you wouldn't typically you wouldn't retain the name George. It's right. more of like as you're coming back as a phoenix, you have your phoenix based name. Oh, interesting. Okay, this is where I go to Google. And try mm -hmm. to find a thesaurus. <laughs> Do I need a last name? No. Yes. So it's basically the single the single name thing. So then, like, I was leaning towards the wolf thing because I had brought it up at one point. Then the barbarian, the feral. So I was thinking of like, um, Canis. Mm -hmm. mm. So so would be would be my character, and some people may. I mean, you may get shortened to Cain or something along those lines. I think I'm gonna go with Lilith. Hmm. You show up in our outline as anonymous wolf right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who am I? Oh, I'm just me. Dang it. Do you choose which one you are? 
I don't think so. No, no. but uh, it's it's pretty random. You were a moose earlier, but now you're a wolf, and that's pretty uh, that's pretty eerie. Oh, see, they knew. They knew. I still have to pick a name. You know what? I'm just gonna. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll go with that. Adora. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That checks out. Yeah. <laughs> what will our team name be? So the examples it gives is things as simple and straightforward as Wing 17 or something. <laughs> the Brute something Squad. More, yes. Yeah, more complex. You are the Brute Squad. <laughs> Done. <laughs> I mean, so I'm looking, obviously I'm also using Google, um, but when I saw that, like, stu- I don't know why it stood out. And I mean, I, I feel like I like it and I don't like it at the same time. So maybe that makes it perfect um, is bad news. Mm. So I feel like that's like bad, every bad news. Ver- version of a, yeah, bad news. Because um, we also never show up with good news. Um, I think we should just be called No Second Chances. <laughs> I like it. Hmm. That's interesting. I, I'm fine with that. Yep. No Second Chances. I have three things written down on my notes. Uh huh. So your school, your name, and your wing. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, this will be this will be a fun recap of who my character is. You should have a pile of cards. It's okay. Yep, I'll figure it out. All right, there we go. It, is that everything then? Mm-hmm. We did it. We did it. Duh. We Duh. came back to life. Uh. Formed a team. And are ready to face the dread. Yeah. I can't believe it. Mm-hmm. This is pretty cool. Um, We've got some really interesting uh, story capabilities here. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. Uh, well, uh, thank you so much, Neil, for joining us uh, for our Phoenix Dawn Command character creation episodes. Of course, I'm. I've, it's been a long time coming. Like you said, it all just the crux was getting cards in hands. Mm-hmm. That was like, it. We finally did it. <laughs> literally after the first recording that we had for Dungeons and Dragons Series One, you were like, "Hey, uh, Phoenix Dawn Command, I got that. I would love to do that." Yep. I think it says in our um, in our spreadsheet of stuff. You were like, Neil wanted to do this one, and I was like, Don't you need cards? And then Ryan commented back, Maybe he was trolling us. <laughs> 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 so I'm no. glad we got to do it and prove that you weren't. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was not. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so Neil, do you want to remind people where they can find you online? The number one place is usually Twitter, where you can find me at Jote Maniac. That's Jack of All Trades, Master of None, IAC. There you go. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you to everyone listening. And please come back next week for our discussion episode. Call to action. Yeah, like that. I am loving phoenix dawn command i'm really really excited that we got a chance to talk about this one like it's Mm -hmm. been it was so much fun to play i'm dying to play it again but it was fun just to get the chance to talk about it after what like three years of yeah waiting to do it (laughs) (laughs) of meaning to cover this game i know so um just a couple announcements here at the end and a review to read Ooh. Yeah, uh, first up, you can check out the season finale to my live streamed game over at twitch.chimera.games and see some expert role playing and some really fun game mechanics for Chimera uh, that are shaping up to be some of my favorite moments in the game, uh, which is really cool to see. Also today, if you're listening to this on the day it comes out, um, is Network Overlord uh, TV personality and multiple book author podcasting's James D'Amato's birthday. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you are listening to it, like I said, on the day that it comes out, please go ahead and wish James a happy birthday. Uh, Maybe buy some of his books. Maybe uh, back the network Patreon if you aren't already. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, give him a shout out. Tell him happy birthday. Listen to my dog make noise in the background while we record. (laughs) Again, still. Um... But, you know, what what better gift than the acknowledgement of um, our need for capitalism to survive? So go go buy some of his stuff. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> and and James, if you happen to be listening somehow uh, on your busy day, uh, happy birthday. Yes, happy birthday, James. Yeah. Finally, uh, we have an updated review to read for you all. Uh, if you want your review read here, uh, go ahead and leave us a rating and review wherever you are able to. And as long as we can find it, uh, we will go ahead and read it out here. Uh, like this one from Tigranosaurus from Australia on iTunes, uh, who was also a guest on the show at one point. Titled, Fantastic Idea, Well Executed, Recommended. Two years on and everything I said still holds true. Uh, this pod lifts up the lid on a different on different gaming systems through the lens of character creation. Ryan and Amelia have a great dynamic and a great approach. Have watched this emerged from tweet to idea to show over the last few months. That's the that's the old part. And was a, a ball to finally have it in my ears. So so good. Super keen to see other systems. More power to you both. Thumbs up waves from Australia. Yes. Well, and thank you also for being a guest on our Golden Sky, Sco- Golden Sky Stories episodes, too. Absolutely. Yeah, those, those were... that. I, I need to play that game so bad. Yeah, those were those were a lot of fun. I am unfortunately couldn't do the second part of it when we recorded the, the last wrap-up part, but like I had so much fun with that beginning. Um, uh-huh. Yes. Well, hello from the United States as well. <laughs> uh, it's upside down probably when we wave to you, but, you know... <laughs> It happens. <laughs> we uh, mean well. And from what I understand, it is cold down there, so stay warm. Yes. Yeah, uh, it's winter there, isn't it? It is winter. Yeah. 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 Well, I think that is all we have for this week. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and uh, please join us again next week when we do our discussion block. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we got to read some show blurbs. 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 Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Design Doc. Join hosts Hannah Schaefer and Evan Rowland as they redesign a role-playing game. Design Doc is an experiment in public participatory analog game design. It's fun, it's messy, and you're invited along for the ride.